with everyone in the world with their own view. Ever wonder if God has a view? And, and that's what the show's all about. What's God's view versus our view? Topics that affect our daily life. Empowering and inspiring. Right. To develop a heart, a kingdom mindset, you know. It's like, because God does have a view. Your host, Dr. Trudy Simmons, The Christian View. Welcome, welcome to The Christian View. What a great audience we have today. Thank you all for being here. Um, and thank you for inviting us into your home. This is The Christian View. We take today's hot and challenging topics and weigh it against the Word of God because God does have a view. And I believe, I say this often, but I believe God's Word needs to be out more today than ever. And, you know, so I'm just thankful that we're allowed to be with you today sharing the gospel of the good news. Um, although today we're not going to really talk about the good news. We're going to talk about mean people. Um, so, so stay tuned because there is good news at the end, but there's always good news with Jesus. But so the other day, um, Trudy, I was walking. We live on a side street and there's no sidewalks. And I have two kids and we were walking up and down the street as we do often. And this person comes by in this car speeding so fast. I mean, it just was like blew me back he was going so fast. So I throw up my hands and I'm like, slow down. And um, a few minutes later, the car comes back and he slowly gets beside me. He goes, what's your problem? And I said, I said, sir, I have kids on this road and the speed limit is 25. You are clearly going over 25. He goes, what's your problem? And I was a little scared. Like I kept looking down at his hands. I'm thinking, is he going to pull out a gun or, you know, and I was like, sir, I would just appreciate if you just follow the speed limits because I do have kids and it's very dangerous. He said a couple of cho choice words, gave me a, sig a finger and sped oh, off, wow. like squealed his tires and sped off. And I was like, Lord, that was mean. Like yes. that was mean. But unfortunately, we're going to face mean people you know, day in and day out. I mean, scripture says that, you know, sin has kind of hooked people's hearts and we, we have sin in our hearts. And in Romans 1, 28 and 30, it, it gives us a list of it. It includes malice, gossip, slander, heartlessness, and ruthlessness. You know, sometimes Christian, non-Christians can be mean. And so Trudy, let's just go to scripture. What does the Bible say about mean people? Right. Well, and you just fed perfectly into what I was, what we we're going to talk about. So, you know, the Bible really calls mean people evildoers. Mm -hmm. And so there's, to me, like three major points, and that is, um, their numbers will increase in the last days. Yeah. That's what the yes. Bible tells us. And and just to what you experience, that the people's, people will be lovers of themselves, yes. not loving good, treacherous, and reckless, mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. like what you yeah. experience. And actually, God instructs us to avoid such people when possible. And then secondly, but as Christians, we should not be afraid of evildoers or mean people right. because we know it's spiritual warfare. Amen. And we have... We have the last say in spiritual warfare, but Deuteronomy 3.22 says, You shall not fear them for the Lord your God. It is the Lord your God who fights for right, you. Right, so, uh, right. So, you know, anytime we encounter something like that, just always praying in the spirit mm -hmm. while that's happening. And then lastly, we're to pray for them, love them, do good, and not repay evil for evil because vengeance is mine, says the Amen. Lord. And I think you handle that so well because it's so easy to let your emotions escalate mm -hmm. and let anger like what, to repay mean for mean because it just seems like right. that's the emotion being fed. But as we step back as Christians and just say, no, mm -hmm. that's not what we're called to do. We're called to love them, but stand our ground. Amen. Yeah. And I think when I had that conversation with the man, I was thinking, okay, how should I respond? How should I respond? And then I was quickened and I was like, wait a minute, I, I need to stop this conversation because it's going nowhere quick and it's going really bad. And so I was just like, okay, you know, just have a good day. Just, you know, control your speed on my street. But um, also your kids are watching right. how you yes. respond yeah. and that's mm -hmm. just as important. It is. I, I think, you know, we are being watched as believers. Mm -hmm. How are we going to respond when we are when we are slandered, when we are lied about, when we are, you yes. know, shot. And I'm not, I don't want to, this is not being abused. I'm not talking about physical yes, abuse. Right. I want to make sure I get that clear. But right. the the verbal and the, and the hate and the slander and all those, how are we as believers, you know, what does God say you do? Yeah. I love how you responded to that because I think that lots of times as Christians, we do not um, understand how responsible we are to release light into the world and enlighten them on situations mm -hmm. and be and have the confidence in educating them right. and enlightening them like you did the young man you did you gave him the benefit of the doubt right that how I'm, I'm about to enlighten you 
how your behavior is impacting or can hurt someone, right. I'm helping you at this moment. So once you realize that he was not receptive mm -hmm. of you enlightening him, mm -hmm. then that was your cue. Okay, now right. I'm giving it over to, to God to handle or whomever right. to handle this person. We have a responsibility and duty when these situations come to speak up mm -hmm. and bring light to them. Right. But we definitely have to be led by the spirit so that we don't escalate the situation right. or, 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 and that we have Fuel the ability yeah. to de-escalate. Right. And right. sometimes when we speak up, we do de-escalate. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people are very receptive. So, you know, I'm sorry. You know, right. I've had a bad day. I've had situations like that where mm -hmm. people have blown up on me. And the first, my first response is always, are you having a bad day? Mm -hmm. And right. sometimes that in itself, oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. It de-escalates. Right. And then it helps me further. Um, show the love of God, the light of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God to that person. Because mm -hmm. they just could be simply right. having a, a bad, bad day. day. Right. And, and we've know. all been there. We've all right. had those yes. bad days. We've right. all probably yes. spoken harshly. We've yeah. all probably yes. gossiped or, you know, at one point in our life, we've, yes. we've been there, right? Yeah. Yeah, we had, We're not above fault. Right. And even just, you know, responding, I think all of us are kind of saying the same thing from a place of using empathy right. yeah. and looking at, you know, okay, what is not saying because a lot of times it escalates people when we you know we say what's wrong yeah more so than what happened you right, know like yeah. you know what what is really you know what is really the issue you know like in this case you know if he whatever his issue was you know you stayed in a place of really just kind of trying to keep him right at a low key that's right, right. Mm -hmm. that's right we'll be back with a little bit more here on how to deal with mean people in your life don't go away Christian View, we are talking about how to deal with mean people. Mm. You know, we've either been mean mm -hmm. or we've had people be mean to us. And so scripture talks a lot about, you know, meanness, evil people and how to deal with them and how to um, overcome evil with good. But Lee, let's just, you know, ask this one question. Why are people mean? <laughs> what makes people mean? I think that usually the first um, thing when I encounter someone that's really mean is that somebody is usually that's hurt mm. or has something yeah. going on on the inside or they've had an offense right. and now they are in a place where they're almost like, I'm on the defense so I'll attack first before somebody attacks me. Right. And, um, um, for Christians, when you encounter that, um, it's usually a person that to me is void of understanding mm. and is not in a place where they're really walking in spiritual maturity and immature, you know, because, you know, we don't, as Trudy said earlier, God will avenge us and he'll right. fight our battles. So we don't Amen. have to fight and be on the defense or on the attack and always, you know, as they say in the world, clapping back at people, right. you know, we let God do that. You know, mm. I always tell people all the time that, you know, God can spank somebody's butt better than you ever can. Mm. You know? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know, I think that's true. I went through a, I went through something in my life. It was for about a year, and I kept hearing the Holy Spirit say, I've got your reputation. Mm -hmm. I've got your back. Stay quiet. I will yes. defend you. And slowly I've watched the Lord restore and yes. rebuild the things that were broken. And it's a beautiful thing. If we can trust Him yes. that much, to that person is hurting, mm -hmm. right? And to not take offense, which we've talked right. about offense in the past, but to not take offense and just right. to take it to the cross. But this scripture I kept for a long time, it was um, Psalms 55, 12 and 13. It says, if any, if it, if it was an enemy insulting me, I could endure. If it was a foe rising against me, I could, mm -hmm. I could handle it. But it was you, a man like myself, a companion, a close friend. And right. so when it's some Someone that's close to you, mm -hmm. a believer, or, you know, a spouse, a, an ex-spouse, or a, a friend, or whatever, when they're mean to you, Lee, what do yes. you do with that? Well, I think, you know, as you're saying again, it's just really an opportunity for you to display the love of God, you know, similar like Jesus did, you know, even when the ones that were on the cross, when he was on the cross and they were casting lots, beating men, doing all these things. Here he is, even though they're wrong, he's right. looking past their wrong and saying, Father, forgive them for they right. know not what they do. Yes. And I think, you know, it sounds, you know, um, very hard to do, but in essence, you've had to, you've, it's a freedom in it when you can forgive people right on set. Now, we're not, as you were saying earlier, not talking about somebody who's physically abusing you and doing things of that nature, even though we do have to, you know, forgive and move right, on, right. even in that. But in that situation, you want to definitely remove yourself mm -hmm. as quickly as you can. But in those situations where your spouse, uh, I think 
coming from a place of what happened versus what's wrong with you, you right? Know? Yeah. Or what's wrong with me? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Why are they? Why? Right. What's wrong with me that makes them feel that they can be? this attackive yes. or this mean to me. Right, I was uh, just sharing with you guys just before we came on air that my birthday was Monday. So someone that I love very, very much, totally forgot Happy birthday. it. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> totally forgot it. And then when I brought it to their attention, they totally like was very mean to me about wow. bringing it to their attention. And uh, it was very hurtful. Right. And one of the first things, and I think this is definitely, this is definitely mature, maturity with me, was that number one, Tamika, stand your ground. This is wrong for this person mm -hmm. to not acknowledge that. Right. So stand your ground on that mm -hmm. and state how you feel concerning that. Right. Walk in truth with that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but then also show some empathy here because I had to give that person the benefit of, of the doubt mm -hmm. and say, something has to be wrong here. Right. Right. This is not personal. Like I had to say to myself, right. Tamika, don't take this personal. Right. This, right. Y there's something bigger happening right. here. And so I, I'm more apt now in my growth to think about it's not personal. There's something bigger that is working That's here right. in this situation. So be, show more empathy, That's right. show more grace, right. but also, guard your heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. because, and I like what you yeah. did, the Matthew 18 principle. You you go to that person, right? Yeah. You go to yes. that person, you go to them in love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go to them not condemning and go to them with an open heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the initial question for this section you said, why are people right. mean? And I think, you know, when it's a non-believer, they're acting as they are, a yeah. non-believer. Right. So they don't have the fruit of the Spirit and they don't have the peace of Christ mm -hmm. and they don't have the Holy Spirit guiding them. But I was thinking about when it's an unbeliever, and I mean, when it is a Ooh, Christian right. and a believer and why it hurts worse. And I think I was studying it as often as because they value being right mm -hmm. over, over being like right. Christ. Right. And I think when we value that, that is where the, um, mm -hmm. the bitterness, the hatred, the right. anger, the, all of that. Yeah. Yes, when right. all of that comes yeah. there, and I think, so, like you said, we really have to check our spirit mm -hmm. and respond as Christ did, as you said. He could have, he had every reason to yes. retaliate, but he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Well, when a Christian should know what to do, then back to what you said mm -hmm. is confronting them in a loving way and right. also but saying, Maybe that isn't what you attended, but this right. hurt me. Yes. And it could be, you know, that the, the person who's being mean is just immature, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And then when you go to them in love, you can bring light into right. the darkness. You can shed light on that, you know, because I don't think, and maybe this is me being naive, mm -hmm. Pastor Lee, but people generally want to be mean. Right. right. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I think usually it is a, as a place of either they have feel like they've extended themselves in the past mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. someone took advantage of them. Right. Right. So now they're in a place mm -hmm. where they got this defense up where like now yes. I'm going to attack you or right. do something now to either drive you away from me because I don't want anybody getting close to me and eat like that again mm -hmm. and then hurting me. So I think right. that's usually some former uh, offense that has happened in their life and now this is more of a reaction to that. And the enemy loves that. Yeah. He loves that division. Right. Right. Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. He thrives on that. Yes. He is the divisor. Right. He's yes. the one that divides us. But I love what Dr. Stanley says. He goes, remember that adversity is a bridge to a deeper relationship mm -hmm. with God. And a lot like Tamika was saying is that when these things happen, just know that it can be our bridge to God. Yes. And I was talking to a federal judge about why are people mean? And he said, it's three reasons. And I mean, he was so adamant about it. He said, it's lack of faith, which mm -hmm. I was surprised to hear uh, say that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, broken families mm -hmm. and a lack of education. Yeah. Oh, and then he said, and I'll tag on to that, no consequence for bad behavior. Right. I think it's identity. Yeah. Too. yeah. Where's yes. your identity? We'll be right back with a little bit more on how to deal with mean people here on The Christian <laughs> View. Don't go away. Welcome back to The Christian View. Um, we're talking about mean people, which is funny that I'm laughing, mm -hmm. but I'm um, sorry. We're talking about mean people and how do we handle mean people. And we talked a little bit of the last, you know, that, that I don't think people generally want to be mean. Right. And we talked a little bit about why they're mean and the, you know, the identity crisis going on in our world and the entitlement crisis and, and, and things like that, you know, but, 
But God is good. In Jeremiah 17, 19, it does say this. It says, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure, who can understand it? Yes. You know, so with Christ, we may feel hopeless, you know, to overcome these obstacles that we're struggling with. But with Christ, all things are possible. So in saying all that, Tamika, how should we respond to mean people? We've touched a little bit on it, but, you know, we're all going to experience it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think we have to go back to Romans 8. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to, by the Spirit, and I think that these situations, they are situational. And as the Holy Spirit leads us right. when we are encountering these type of situations, if it's the cashier at the store who mm -hmm. just did right. something, you know, mean to you, you're not going to address that situation the same way you're going to address the greeter at the church right. that is Sunday after Sunday, snatching gum out of people's mouths and <laughs> throwing it across the church in the trash can. Right, right. You're not going to address those situations the, the very same way. Mm -hmm. So, or if it's your children, you have to be led by the Spirit on how we are dealing with these encounters because what the Spirit leads us to do uh, is ultimately going to have a purpose. Right. So if it's to just dismiss it, not mm -hmm. say anything at all, God has a purpose. The Spirit is leading us in that, that direction. Right. So I, I believe that those situations, it's just like what happened with you. Mm -hmm. You didn't know he was coming back. So at that time, the Word of God tells us to be ready, though. Right. We, when it's time, right. just be ready to handle it as the Spirit leads us to handle it. So I, I, I believe we have, this is why our relationship with Christ is very important. Right. And it, this is why we have to dive into the Word of God to see all these different, listen, David was going to kill <laughs> Nabal. Do you understand? Yes. Because right. he was playing Abigail out said, mean. Mm -hmm. But Abigail said, no, Right. This, this is not. But there were times where there were straight up mean kings mm -hmm. doing mean things where we're going to take out the whole, we're going to take out the whole generation. That's right. That's so right. I believe that it's, it's by the spirit. Yeah. That we yeah. And Romans 12, 18, it says, Lee, if possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with all people. Yes. If possible. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. And I think, you know, I was just sitting here thinking, like, I am not by nature a mean person. Right. No. And, um, you know, <laughs> and I know even though the, the, um, the topic today is about dealing with mean people, you know, we're really not talking about, you know, any mean people. Uh, we're not being mean. But um, definitely, I think, you know, as we deal with them, I, I just think that, you know, the best way is to first and foremost not be mean back, if right. that yeah, makes sense. Right. You know, trying to stay in a place of not retaliating. Right and trying to get to a place where you can help them to move into a place of, okay, a better light, you know, and helping them to understand, okay, you don't always have to respond from a place of hurt or anger, right. you know. To me, I don't feel like, you know, that I should have to feel bully people or, you know, be really overbearing in order to get somebody to do something. But most right. people that are mean think that that's the way that, you know, right. they got to come across right. Billy Goat Gruff, mm -hmm. you know, and really be ugly and antagonistic to either keep people following them or get someone to do what do they want them to do. you think that's out of insecurity? Uh, most yeah. definitely, yes. yes. Most definitely, That yes. goes back to identity. You yes. know, if we have to yeah. manipulate and control people right. and yeah. act out of anger to get what we want, then that's the, that's the person's identity right. issue yes. and right. truly we cannot take that on no. ourselves no. and you know I think that a lot of times it's helpful to just say oh really that must right. be terrible and the more you empathize. sort of what you're saying the more you empathize and yeah. the more you just let them hear what they're saying eventually it runs its course and they hear their own words and realize well I'm just being either you know whiny right. or grumpy or that right. type thing and you don't even really have to give advice you don't right. because right. I feel like when you try to change mm -hmm. them or try to confront right. the yeah. behavior and give them a different point of view it only digs them in right right there's right. that there's that saying out there um, give the world Jesus and use your words if you need to that right. you know and yeah. I remember right. being at a grocery store one time and, and I smile to pretty much to everybody. I, I just look at him and smile. And this older gentleman goes, why are you smiling? And it kind of caught me off guard because I'm like, well, I was like, well, I, I like to smile. He goes, I'm just wondering because no one ever smiles. And I was like, there you have it. You know, we can, we can, we can enlighten, you know, encourage people's heart just by smiling at them, yes. just by saying, hello, how's your right. day? I mean, we don't have to preach hellfire and broomsticks right. to right. mean people. We can just be the light in the midst mm -hmm. of a dark world. Right. right. Two th points I wanted to make when you were asking how should we respond to mean people, like you were saying, it has to be led by the Holy Spirit. Jesus knew how to respond mm -hmm. in every situation. He did, okay? yes. right. 
So there were times when Paul wrote, have nothing to do with them, keep away from them. You must not associate with them. And that is when you have prayed about it and you are seeing they are bent on evil and there's right, nothing right. you can say. Right. But then on the other hand, Christ is saying, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, overcome evil with good, be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving. You know, it is God's kindness that leads right. to repentance. Yes. Right. So I think like going back to what Tamika said, it's really in each situation praying, Lord, am I adding fuel to the fire or can I love them so much that we will overcome evil mm -hmm. with good? And that may be just not saying anything, just like yes. the, the gentleman in the car. You know, I could have kept adding fuel to the fire by continuing to say something. But at that point, I was like, you know what? I just need to take a pause. That's I'm going right. to take a pause. I'm just going to let this situation move on, you know, and I think even with husbands and wives and, and de close relationships, you've got to learn to take a pause and to step back and let the Holy Spirit do his work, right? you know, and make, and, you know, just soften someone's heart because he will mm -hmm. if but we it's let like him. An earlier episode of walking in love. Right. And we cannot do that out of our own flesh, right. especially when someone is being evil or mean to us. Right. It is really saying, mm -hmm. Lord, you see how what they are doing. I'm giving it to you, and may I respond as right. you would. Yeah. Right, and then setting those boundaries as needed. Right, set yeah. the boundaries, yeah. you know, as needed. If, you know, what is it? Shame on once happens yeah. once. Yeah. Shame, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, and so if you're constantly being put in a contact with the same mean person, um, you got to set those boundaries. You, yes. you've got to be able to protect yourself. And boundaries are not bad. Going no. back right. to what um, we talked about earlier, that the Bible does say to avoid them. Right. You know, right. if possible, when you know there's no changing the situation, right. just avoid the situation Absolutely. and not put yourself in, yeah. in there. In there right. too. Absolutely. We're, we're not supposed to, yeah, we're not supposed to be a, a, in a boxing ring all That's the time, right, right? with, with exactly mean people. Right. So yeah. God has God has a better way. And so yes. as, as believers, we need to be the light in the darkness. So yeah. we'll be right back with a little bit more here on The Christian View. Don't go away. The Christian View. We've had a great discussion today on mean people. You know, we've all been there. We've all been mean and we've all been mean too. But God is faithful. He's a great redeemer. He's the righteous judge. He's 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 for you and not against you. So just know that He loves you and that He will cause all things to work out for your good and His glory. Stay in the Bible. Stay in faith. Stay connected to God. Have a great day. Bye-bye.